episode 384 of Global From Asia. And we are talking about the grind in COVID business in Asia. Let's do this. Welcome to the Global From Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now your host, Michael Michelini. Yep. What is up, everyone? Thank you so much for hopping in again for another podcast here with Mike again. And we are so excited. I think Mike is super excited with this episode. What can you say? Just yeah. a quick background about this episode. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you you picked up the microphone from him, Rico. He's <laughs> our old friend and the you know fellow podcaster, the Made in China podcast. And I saw him in Manila just before the world changed like around march 2020 and he's been on the show a couple times i think he's been the most frequent guest of our of our show and we've also you know i've been on his show faith will probably get to get you over there too soon and it'll be fun and uh, so we talk about you know the grind i call me i was thinking about the title we're talking about the grind you know it's like (laughs) an update podcast about how their business is going you know how clients they're working with and their sourcing is going how we've been adjusting and uh, yeah it's a it's a round table right there's a few people you know we add yeah. alan came involved with his business newer business partner and t- yeah. discuss that story but it's a lot of fun it was a lot of fun honestly and we really enjoyed that time because there was just a lot of inputs learning from each other and at the same time you were giving inputs as well so i think this episode you will be learning a lot everyone and also For the podcast listeners, please stay tuned for this episode. And we're super excited for for everyone to hear this one and to watch this one again. Of course, it's already Halloween. I I believe so. Any any plans on Halloween? I don't know. I'm like, I'm you know, I'm a dad. I Miles wants to go trick or treating. I don't know if they have it in the. (laughs) I'm in the burbs here, you know, in Thailand, and I don't know Mm -hmm. if they have. I don't know if they have trick or treating here. I gotta I gotta look that up. (laughs) But you want to check that, of course, for the kids as well. They might be very happy on that, of course. And before I just remember at the time when I was a kid, I used to wear Power Puff Girls with my twin oh, sister. Wow, yeah. And the other Power Puff, we are only two. And the other one is my mom. Wow. <laughs> If, that you're was bring, so funny. I, if you have any photos, we can show it maybe on the show notes or something. If- yeah, sure try to pull that up (laughs) but yeah halloween Um, it's halloween everyone again it's already october wow i can't believe it right it's It's fast approaching 2023 it's just around a corner are you pretty excited for the next year oh yeah i mean actually we just had a i just had a call with our buddy andres our partner andres and akatai and uh, we had a strategy call about q4 the new products we added since that show and uh, you know we're He's also a New Year's resolution person. I don't know if you are, you know, some people like do it. I I love New Year's resolution. So me too. Me too. Yeah. Great. We got a lot Mm -hmm. to do. We got a lot to do next year. So a lot of plans, you know, a lot of of stuff, so much to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Super exciting. Again, it's 2023 and it's already a year that passed. Like, wow. I know. A so, lot happened. A lot so happened. Much, so and much is happening. I believe that your week was so hectic, hectic as well. I believe so. There's a yeah. lot happening this week for there's you. There's so much. Uh, there's so much. I think we can have our. I call it the blah 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 session after the interview. We can talk about some things. We're doing some business together. Faith is super yeah. exciting. We can share about your business that we're we're getting involved with and some opportunities for listeners. Just a little mm-hmm. teaser. We'll, we'll get we'll build that up more. We also got the mastermind for GFA VIP members next week. We got a lot of things, but yeah, I mean it's logistic stuff. So much logistic mm-hmm. stuff, <laughs> and <laughs> we'll talk about it after the after this amazing interview with. We're super excited on that part. Yeah, we're actually making business together. We are doing it. Well, we'll want to give you a quick glimpse of that. I believe so. We'll be best in the later part of this video. So you can first focus on our episode and learn more about our guests. And also with Mike, well, let's just hop on in and let's Let's, keep going. Let's do this. Let's do this and watch this episode. Great. 
Are you looking for a cross-border logistics company from Asia to the East and the West? Then look no further. Cross Better Logistics is a solution for you. From ocean shipping to air freight, from factory to 3PL warehouse, Amazon FBA, and Walmart. Cross Better Logistics is an experienced service provider for e-commerce sellers and B2B traders on TPS Trade. As a GFA Partner Level sponsor, let them know we sent you and they'll take care of you. Check them out at www.crossbetter.com today. Hello everyone, this is Faye with you as your host here and Global from Asia podcast. And today, this is a special one, so we do have good and amazing guests here with us, which are two wonderful entrepreneurs that we have here with our podcast. And absolutely, we will not be complete without our Mike Michelini. Hi, Mike, how are you? What's up, Face? Doing great, I'm doing great. And how's it? How, how's your whole week? It's been a while. Uh, I don't know if we've talked about it. You were joking with me about flooding in the Philippines. It's flooded. The school's been closed for the last two days, you know, because of flooding in Thailand. The teachers are all flooded out. I guess they live together. <laughs> so the kids are at home and my wife's at the DMV for three days in a row. So it's just me. Three days DMV, man. Can you believe that? Trying to get a license back. <laughs> but it's all good. Just fun. Family uh fun. <laughs> All right, but at least you were able to overcome that as well. Since here in the Philippines, it's been signal number five last time. It was so scary, but now everything's doing well. Everything's just moving forward here. Well, again, I don't want to keep our viewers and listeners waiting. I want everyone to immediately learn more about our guests. All right, so we have Rico here, and we are so happy to have Rico back here in our show. Again, this is Rico Noma, our the CEO, Source Find Asian, and the host of Made in China podcast. How are you doing today, Rico? I'm good. I'm good. I respect the energy. You know, I respect fate's energy. <laughs> awesome. It's like a, it's a good energy. I, I feel it. So I'm getting hyped listening to you. Yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I'm just on a little like vacation. I'm going to be traveling soon because it's the October National Day Golden Week holiday in China. So decided to take some time off. But wow. I, I'm still working, even though I'm <laughs> inside my podcast. Doing podcast. Yeah, thanks. No, and I, and I have a I have a brainstorm session with Alan at seven thirty today. So like, oh. my girlfriend my girlfriend was like, "Wait, aren't you on vacation?" And I'm like, I, "I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I have no idea what to tell you. I just we're never uh, I can't on vacation. Stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're never on vacation. All right, okay, but and at the same time, I believe so. Mike wants to tell a quick a bit a bit story, uh, just a short story that your luggage. It's still no. with Rico. Do you want to just tap into that? Actually, Faith, you should you should thank him. You have the microphone right there. Yeah, I have Isn't that. Our, I was able mic? to get that. And but I think Rico was quite a bit, very busy at that time. So I was able to get that in the morning. I it's believe awesome. so. Yeah, so the stuff's still there, you know. Actually, yeah, my background. I have a whole suitcase. Yeah, he's still got, <laughs> I think it's two bags. Suitcase and a backpack. Honestly, yeah. man, that's like... I, I'm almost forgetting about it. It's two and a half years. Can you believe that? Two and it's a half crazy. years. Yep. It's actually kind of my core stuff. I, 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 I think I had some good clothes I like in there. I had, you know, obviously some different gear, but basically I had to evacuate Philippines in March, thir March, 2020. And I couldn't get back to Manila to get most of my stuff. Cause I was in Bohol for a company retreat. El Faith was LJ, Alvin, and these some others like Stephanie and then there was a lockdown I couldn't get back to Manila and I had to evacuate to China unbelievable so yeah thanks Rico <laughs> for <laughs> storing my stuff there oh brother but uh, yeah I hope to pick it up in December December I'll be back yeah it's all, I mean it's all good I have like a there's a third room in my my condo which is supposed to be like the Yaya's room the cleaner's room and it's turned into a storage room so it's like it's not a big deal you know but yeah, yeah, I even forget about it sometimes when I walk into that room. I don't <laughs> notice the, the, the bags. Okay. 
All right. Well, and at the same time, I know that Mike was, was also busy and wasn't able to get that yet. But again, thank you so much for helping out, Mike. It's a good quick story for everyone's, just everyone's information, why all of your things, just some of her luggage is still with Rico as well. I think we're cool we like that. that. We're close like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I also have a friend like that. That's how we are as well. We just want to help and all. But I want to know more about Alan as well. You want to present Alan, Mike? Yeah, Alan. Alan's great. He's been on a show before. We were talking actually a couple, couple of years ago, okay. and he's he's he really got a great sourcing experience and is working with Rico a lot. I, I'd love to hear Alan's latest too. You want to fill us in, Alan? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> First of all, second up, Faith, your energy. I think, Rico, you're going to have to work on your intro. So, yeah. no, you know, the thing is, Alan, I'm, I'm the smooth jazz intro. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the smooth jazz <laughs> intro. You know, I mean, it's, just, it's a different vibe. Low but energy. it's still a vibe. <laughs> yeah, so I suppose a, a brief background on myself. My, my family business have been importing and sourcing goods out of China for 50 years next year. It'll be the, the company's 50th year anniversary. The business was wow. built in souvenirs. So I'm from Ireland, if you haven't guessed by the accent. Um, <laughs> we would make leprechauns and shamrocks and anything green and tacky that you would sell to tourists. Over the years, it, the business developed. We have uh, sort of several brands that sit under the, the company umbrella. The biggest one being Tipperary Crystal, which we bought about 10 years ago, 11 years ago now. And I've developed that into the, the biggest giftware business in Ireland, which we wholesale throughout Ireland and a bit into the UK now. I moved out to Hong Kong in 2017, set up my own sourcing business, came across Rico through his podcast and, and you, Mike, as well, actually, when I was searching all things sort of business related in, in China. And uh, yeah, started working with Rico very kind of early days, five years ago in the sourcing business. Awesome. I had also set up an apparel company at the start of that work at the end of 2018 and launched about a month before COVID kicked off. So that's been a bit of a struggle. I recently shut it down because of just, just everything that's been going on. But the big news, kind of the recent big news is that I merged uh, my sourcing business with SourceFind Asia. So working a lot more with Rico day-to-day -day basis now. Uh, yeah, I'm working on a lot of projects. So we're kind of building, building that company out and different aspects to the business that we're trying to, trying to develop that we can launch in the, in the near future. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm really happy. You guys are both good, good friends and good people. So that's, that's really nice to hear. And it seems yeah, like it's, it's been... all of you have been doing great as well. And you want to put your input as well. Great go. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to touch on the, the merger side of things. Like, obviously, we're still trying to figure out exactly how that works. But, like, it's been great just in general to have somebody who's in, you know, I, you know, I love China Mike and, and the China Mike is my original business partner. And he still obviously maintains his stake in the company. But he's in the States. So, you know, I, I talk to him generally at night when I can't actually do things at that time in terms of, of work. Whereas me and Alan are in the same time zone, so it's easy to just kind of bounce ideas off of each other and then implement them before the workday is done. So that's been that's been a fun experience. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's one of the things we one of the things from the show notes that we might touch on later in terms of uh, failures in business. And one of the things with with earned with the apparel just not working with someone on a day to day basis or the right people on a day to day basis just, I suppose, personally gives you a, a lot of fulfillment as well, which is, I think, something we probably touch on later on in the podcast. Oh. Yep. I think all of our listeners and our viewers would be very excited to learn more about what have been, what has been happening in your businesses. How did you grow the business? What's your progress? Well, we want to make sure that we will tap on that a bit later. And of course, today will be something different. It's quite of a round table discussion, I believe. So this is something that I'll be asking questions. You could just put in your inputs. It's as easy as that. If you want to tap in very quickly here. And how are you guys feeling about being outside of China for so long? Well, you know, Alan is in Hong Kong. 
while Rico is in, in here in Manila and Mike is in Thailand. I want to get your inputs, everyone. Let's start with Alan. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> not being able to get in to the to the factories and the Canton Fair, it's it's not been as disastrous as I thought it was going to be. It's been it's it's made things a bit more challenging trying to find new factories without having the kind of the fairs there, but. The fact that we have a we have an office, an SFA office in Guangzhou, and we have our staff there, being able to locate products hasn't been an issue for for our customers. Yeah, I I thought it was going to be a lot more detrimental to the business, but I don't think it has been. I'm looking forward to getting back into the shows. I'm looking forward to China open back up, which a couple of years ago I don't think I would have said about traveling around to some of the factories and spending time in there. But yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to get back in. But yeah, I I don't think it's been is bad uh, on the business. It's been more the other side, the effects that COVID's had on on the West and companies over there. That's, that's been the real kind of downside to things over the last couple of years. Awesome. Okay, good to, good to know that as well. And of course, we want to hear it from Rico this time. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with everything that Alan said. It's been interesting for me just because I have... Uh, I mean, I, we have about like four, five, six employees in China. So we've been working remotely with them for a long time now. And then also we have our partner companies that we work with. But what's been, what's, what I'm most proud of in terms of the situation is that one, I've been able to expand it in the Philippines. I've been able to hire more employees here, start to understand sort of the manufacturing climate in the Philippines. But second, our CEO, Imogen, who's based in China, she's basically just taken over the operations and she's run with it. And she's been handling all these major projects that we've worked on in the past two and a half years. And, you know, it's, it's really cool to see somebody just kind of take hold of their position and, and just step up in, in that moment when you need them. And then that kind of alleviates any concerns that you have over you know, oh, I'm not in China because usually with, with these big projects that we'd have, Mike or myself would be in the factories or around in and around the factories, making sure that everything goes smoothly and Imogen's been able to do that by herself. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Imogen, pretty, Imogen pretty is a real rock star in the business. Yeah. All right, good to hear that as well. I, I mean, of course, here in Manila, it's also good to do business here and also work with, with here, fellow Filipinos. And I believe Mike would love to put some input as well. Yeah, here in my it's still kind of fresh for me outside, you know, about a month now so as a recording that I've been outside of, of China. I was stuck in, kind of stuck in, because if you, what is that, the Hotel California? It's one of my favorite key TVs. <laughs> it's my that's, favorite that's key my, TV uh... song. Yeah, that's, that's me and my girlfriend's song that we dance to all the time. Oh, there you go, man. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> you know, you can't leave, or you can you can go, but you can't leave, or you can come, but you can't yeah. leave. Something Such like a that. But uh, <laughs> there you go. Let's get them. Let's get the KTV going right now. <laughs> but it's still a little fresh Nobody for wants me, to hear you know. That, but <laughs> for me, it was hard when I was on the inside. I was on the inside, you know, and I even did. I did deals and business with people. I never, of course we always do, but there was businesses deals I did where I started and finished without ever meeting them. And it was kind of like larger deals. Like, like I was doing a lot of Amazon acquisition help for, for overseas companies in China. And, uh, you know, we're talking about big, big projects, big deals. And, you know, I think before COVID you would normally they would have flown to China or I would have flown to meet them. Right. But I'm doing all this remotely. It's just been really I think we even said in the show or before the recording, we were saying, I guess we're all just getting work. We're all just getting used to working fully, almost fully online. Like mm -hmm. it's truly like location independent now because of COVID. Maybe it was even a call I had earlier, a Chinese business friend. She was saying how even in China, they're working at home more. I mean, because Chinese were more traditional with the offices and, and uh, physical meetings. So I think we're all just adjusting to this online world. 
I agree. I agree. That's that's pretty much about it because it's already 2022, and I believe so that we are also moving forward with when it comes to COVID. And I I hope everyone's doing well in and in, in their COVID situation in HK and also here in of course Manila. But of course, I want to tap in with Rico. I know you did great setting up a team and systems here for workflows as well, preparing this well before the COVID lockdown. And we even had a podcast with you with Mike about your preparations and spending time less in China. We want to get your insights about it, your interview last time with Mike. Yeah, so the the podcast I think you're referring to was in 2018 or 2019. Mm -hmm. I was I was traveling quite a lot during that time period, both for work. I, when I say traveling, it in and outside of China, both for work and play. And what I noticed was like when I would leave the office, like my my staff wouldn't come to the office, but they were still doing their jobs. They were still doing being effective and everything but the re the reason why i noticed is because we have like samples product samples that get shipped to the office and i would be checking in on some of those samples and then you know people would be like oh i'm not at the office right now and i'll be like okay why so uh initially i had fines for people not showing up to the office and i was finding people and then i just kind of went like well it's kind of hypocritical because i'm traveling so much and i'm working remotely why not have everybody else just work remotely like that makes more sense to me than trying to like force people to do something that they don't want to do especially since they're still getting their work done so we just we implemented remote work systems when i came back to china in the middle of 2019 i sat down with imogen and we sat down and just kind of like wrote down standard operating procedures around remote work systems and we tweaked it over time as we noticed different things happening and then when covid hit it was kind of like not different yeah, for us lucky, because yeah. because we were already used to working remotely for about six months so it was just kind of like oh, okay so we're just doing the same thing that we've been doing for a while the only difference is that i'm just not in china or i can't go to china so so yeah, that was that. And since that time period, I think we've completely gotten used to it. We don't have a physical office space in China anymore. We have a warehouse instead because we, for the samples and products and stuff like that. But our staff pretty much works from home 100% of the time, besides the times that they have to go to the factories and and travel around, but like, yeah. So th those have been the changes. It, it, myself as well, I turned one of the rooms in my apartment into an office space. Uh -huh. I'm thinking about getting a physical office as well now, just because, you know, this is like, uh, I have like a dog and a cat and you know, my, my girlfriend and all this stuff. So I was like, maybe I need to be able to go somewhere else to work, to be a little bit more effective. But yeah, th those have been the major changes. I agree, I agree, and I think Mike would just agree as well, since a lot of our team are working remotely. What can you say, Mike, about it? Yeah, I mean, working online, it's, I, I we, you know, definitely check out, the, we'll link to a lot of these, we're going to reference a few previous shows so you can catch them on the show notes, but yeah, I mean, working online takes takes a lot of effort. It's, it's everybody loves it, but to, to, to actually do it successfully, I think takes extra, even extra efforts and systems and workflows. Than, than working in office. I think, I think everybody here would agree with that. Probably everybody listening. So yeah, I mean, if you, if COVID hit and you weren't doing it online, you had to shift to online. I, I could only imagine how hard it was, but yeah, I think same as, same as Rico, we, when, when COVID hit, we were already working online. So it was just kind of normal business for, for work, which kind of worked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, of course. And also just want to get some stories and input as well from Alan. How, how's everything working remotely for you? Well, I, when I moved here, I was working from home anyway. So mid 2017. And so it didn't affect me at all. I did come from an office environment back home. So I do think there's a nice, it, there, like, I think once everything kind of settles in the next couple of years, there'll be a nice blend with working from home and working in the office. Cause I think having that face-to-face -face time with people, I think it's good for creativity Sorry. rather than sitting at home and in your home office, kind of not dealing with people. And that's, and again, kind of back to what I was saying earlier on, that's, that's one thing that affected me a lot when 
when I was working on my own all the time. But yeah, no, in terms of uh, in terms of changes, though, I was I was doing it for three years or two and a half years when when COVID hit anyway. All right. It seems like all of this uh, three have been doing a lot of things, especially when working from Hill. But we're, I agree. We're, we're all visionaries. <laughs> exactly exactly i think i agree with rico i would love to have a space as well if i'll be given a chance so i can just work uh, you know focus on everything that i'm doing i really understand that i really agree on that as well and now let's move forward here what are the th trends you're seeing in 2022 moving into 2023 and b2b trade and sourcing. I believe that we are years into the COVID lockdowns and the shift to fully remote sourcing and teams. I want to get your inputs, everyone. Let's start with Alan. In terms of trends, it's it's in in sourcing it's it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to say because everyone's obviously looking for different products. We are I've seen a few different companies do it. One pops to mind in terms of Wayflyer, who are a financing company, and then they're also offering freight options and also looking to offer a sourcing and manufacturing option. So in that kind of, they're, they're trying to complete the circle and offer, offer their customers everything, which is something that we're working on with SFA, where we're not just sourcing and manufacturing, we're going to offer the, the full circle, the full, the full offering of goods, whether that's brand design, product design, sourcing, manufacturing, QC, freight, and kind of, kind of all the above. But yeah, I, I, I haven't seen or haven't noticed any very new trends. I mean, maybe Rico, you can help me out here in terms, in terms of what sort of new is popping to mind, but just with considering all different customers are looking for different items in terms of sourcing and manufacturing, it's kind of based on what the trends are in their specific industry rather than what's going on in our industry. I think maybe the main trend that I'm seeing that has been going on for a few years is like companies that are trying to source, not just in China, but maybe a blend of sourcing in China and other countries. So like people are trying to transition outside of China, but they know that they can't do everything outside of China. So that's been something that's getting more and more. It's been like a sort of snowball <clears throat> since I would say 2017, you know, well, since, uh, since that's it. I mean, there's something that happened a lot with Trump with his tariffs mm. and people decided yeah. <laughs> that they were going to move everything outside of China. But there's also been a lot that there was that big shift, but that shift hasn't materialized or it hasn't worked. So people tried to shift to Vietnam, to Cambodia, and they don't have the same. Yeah, they don't have the same infrastructure as China. And, and the quality out of China is, is the best in, in most industries. So there was that big trend for the push for it to happen. And then it just didn't materialize or I haven't seen it in, in a lot of industries completely. Shift well, out. I mean, I've, I've been telling people for a while, it's like, yeah, it's, it's all well and good to say, let's source from outside of China, but like the Im implementation is, is quite difficult to do. And it's going to be many, 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 many years before China is overtaken by another country with yeah. that, with the infrastructure and all that stuff. But I, I, I am noticing more. Oh, another thing I'm also noticing is sustainable products. Like a, a lot of the clients that come to us right now, they want to know if the product has been sourced sustainably, if the product, the raw materials are sustainable. Mm -hmm. Alan, you know this as well, right? Because we've been dealing with this for like a, a year plus. That's yeah. been a new trend. I didn't, I mean, I knew about sustainable products. I knew that we had some clients that had that requirement, but it almost seems like Every, one out of three people that come to us right now, companies that come to us right now are like, is it sustainable? Was it source sustainable? You know, there's still a lot of, uh, yes, 100% that's been asked, like probably even more than one in three. But I also find when it comes down to bottom line, it, that gets thrown out the window pretty quickly. Like people, <laughs> people seem to be asking the question because it's on trend to ask the question. And yeah. whether they want to implement that into their business, like it's, it's nearly like we have a list and we need to ask this question, like, like back in the day, is there child labor in the factory? And like, like, of course you want to work in factories that don't have child labor. And now it seems like sustainability is this trend that everyone asks for. But at the end of the day, if it's going to cost you 
four or five times the price to get a product made sustainably, are they going to do it? I think that's the way things are going to go in 50 years. Everything will be sustainable, but in a lot of industries, it's like still very expensive, like apparel, for instance, to make a, a recycled gym top over, over an, a standard polyester one is four or five times the price. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, actually, what, what Alan was saying earlier about creativity and working together, I, I, I have, I, I, I heard some critical feedback about the new iPhone and, but I guess most of the world is being able to meet in person now besides mainland China. But I know in China, like I, I literally talked to a, is I like, like Rico says, it's, it's golden week, it's holiday, but there's Chinese business people still talking, doing calls with me. And I feel like they're hungry to learn more because they don't have the exposure to the international market mm -hmm. and like those trade shows, they would learn as much as, as much as the international visitors would learn, but they would get ideas of products themselves. So I think, I think it's affecting innovation in general, but especially in the Asia markets, even in Thailand, like I'm back here in Thailand. And like I was mentioning before the recording, people aren't really meeting in person as much. Everybody's mostly doing things online. And I do think it, like it's not, it's affecting uh, innovation and creativity. It's a good point. But even all the, all the big tech, all the big tech companies in the, in the States, are they all back in the office? Are they, they're all still working remotely, aren't they? And I'm not sure either. I guess I don't but I, I know. I remember Facebook said they weren't going to do a live event until 2023. And that was about a year and a half ago. And I, I, I think uh, it was either Google or Apple have only just announced to go back. So a lot, like a lot of them are, People are back, but people are also still working from home. And like, you're right. It's when you meet someone or have a Zoom call or there's a Zoom meeting, it's very, very different to in-person and it's creativity, it's relationships. Like there's like, when you go to a factory in China, you sit down with them, you have dinner and you have a beer and you have all the mounds and mounds of food. And that's what builds the relationships. And it's, it's the same with creativity. Are you in mute or just, just you ask? Is your mic okay? Yeah, Rico, we don't hear yeah. you. Not hearing you. Maybe the AirPods. Yeah, take your time. All right. Yeah. So what I was gonna say is like I, I saw an interview with Mark Zuckerberg and he said that that they're gonna keep it optional for people if they wanna go to the Facebook campus or offices versus working from home. So he's like, that's just the way of the future. So I, I think that that's just going to be more implemented with other companies around the world over time. I don't know how long that's going to take, but like for us, like it's the same thing for us is like, I still think it's important to have a physical office space. I still think it's important to have face-to-face -face meetings from time to time, but I don't think it's a requirement to be effective in, in your work. It, it, it just, I think this whole thing has changed that whole nine to five like you need to be in the office at nine o'clock and you need to leave at five o'clock which yeah i think anyway but it's changed that it's if if you leave at a half day but you've got all your work done obviously depending on on what you're doing in a in a company and i think the higher management are a lot more open to letting people work from home as well because productivity they would have assumed it would have dropped if you're working from home but it seems to be the opposite where people are like i'm going to get my work done quicker so I can have more time off yeah. and finish my day early. So I think it's going to change the whole dynamic. And I think you'll have a lot of people doing the Facebook thing and like the extensive holidays, like even that, like companies who have unlimited holidays, no one takes them because they're all terrified to take three months off because you'll be the guy who took three months off. Just, but, just um, to, just to add to that in terms of productivity, I think what changes in terms of like when you're working remotely is you just have to be a little bit more structured in terms of uh, assigning tasks and who's responsible for what and what you have to do on a daily basis mm -hmm. so like that's the difference it's like when you're in an office you can just walk over to somebody else's cubicle or whatever and just be like hey like you need to do this this and that right now right or today whereas like when you're working remotely it has to be a very much more structured aspect of assigning tasks and assigning specific things that the person has to do and then touching base and checking on progress on those tasks so that's that's the biggest difference i think i've i've noticed like but again with that like even in the office when we were working together in office 
I'm the kind of person where like I don't like being interrupted in the middle of my work. I think Nicolini can relate mm-hmm. to that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like that. So yeah, we do the Pomodoros and it's like I put on my headphones, I'm listening to music and I'm I'm in the zone, I'm working. I don't want to be called. I don't want anybody to touch me at all. <laughs> like just if you want to talk to me, message me on Slack. Literally, if you're sitting next to me, message me on Slack and I will respond when I have time to respond. So you know, people learn that over time and, and it's just one of those things. But yeah, with remote work systems, I think that's important. And one of the things that you learn is that, hey, like you don't have to talk to people all the time. Like it, it's sometimes it's more inefficient to do that. You can always just message them. Well, I surely agree. Again, I have been working from home for quite some time now. I have been doing a lot better ever since compared to I was working on site. Well, it depends on the person, but honestly, I, I agree with you. I do have music that I listen to whenever I work, sometimes like an instrumental, sometimes like a white noise. So depending on my mood, but I agree. I love anything that can help me focus and do deep work as well. And of course, I know we have been talking more about remotely, remotely working and everything, doing all the teams and every single thing. Well, your clients, any trends you are noticing in how they are doing their business so what are the shifts that the, that you really see from at this point let's start with alan well like we have we have had a few new clients recently come on board or well we're in, in the process of of doing sampling who haven't been able to get out to the shows so haven't been able to source source new suppliers themselves and then we've had a few conversations i've had a few conversations with people as well who've who've moved away from having a, a sourcing department or a sourcing kind of expert in their business. And they're looking to outsource that side of things. So that's something that I've definitely noticed in the last kind of six to eight months. Yeah, that would be the, that would probably be the biggest one from my end. Now, whether that's something that holds on, it, it would be interesting to see that the first kind of Canton Fair coming back, how many people come out to it. I think it will be massive. Whenever, whenever China does it open up, but yeah, they, that would be the, probably the, the biggest trend I've I've seen. And how about for Rico? Yeah, that would, that would, I would agree with Alan. That I was also kind of pushing that message in some of our content in terms of like, because I knew like uh, before that people, a lot of companies were flying to China to meet with their factories and maybe source new suppliers, things like that. But like once you cut that option out it's like what are you going to do if you want to find a new supplier you want to have a sort of more close relationship with that supplier then you have to work with somebody that's physically in china and a lot of times you know they don't want to work with the local sourcing companies they want to work with somebody that sort of understands their culture business culture and stuff like that so that's something that i've been saying to people for a while and it's something that i'm beginning to notice more and more and i think that part of the reason why a lot of these companies want to outsource it instead of having their own sourcing division is because at the end of the day, like if you're a tech company or whatever, like you're not going to be focused on sourcing, right? Like that's not your core business. That's not what you do. It's much easier to hire another company to, to work on what they actually do their profession. So yeah, I, I would agree with Alan on that. All right, good. good to hear from that as well. And of course, Mike, what's your input on this one? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I guess it's around value add services, value adds. We we've chatted this on on actually on re- on the Made in China podcast roundtables, but I think people have to, yeah, like like Rico says, focus on what they're focus on their strengths, find strategic partners to do what they're not, not as good at, because I think it's going to get, I think it's going to get harder or there's going to be more and more mergers. Like, you know, Alan, Alan and Rico, I think there's going to be more consolidation in the markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then those coming out after this, you know, shuffle in this market will come out stronger, you know, and I, I, you know, you see the smaller companies, not, not, not surviving as well as the larger ones. Unfortunately, it's actually a little bit scary, but you know, I think there's going to be more consolidation. You know, I, I chat a little bit about the Amazon acquisition space. There was a lot of roll-ups, a lot of mergers of, of conglomerates brands. Already. So it's just interesting to see what happens. 
I agree. I agree. And of course, speaking of this kind of situation that there's a lot of shifting that is happening lately when it comes to businesses here at 2022, we want to make sure that I want to tap into something exciting as well. And of course, our listeners and viewers will love to know as well, what are the biggest mistakes your clients or even your company has ever made all right this this i mean this should be something very exciting for you just so you can tell any anything that you want to share well we all learn from the most of our failures and of course if you're willing to share we'll be happy to learn more about it if you don't want to reveal too much it's okay but at least we'd love to hear some juicy stories and we hope that our listeners and viewers can learn as well well, let's start from Rico. How much time do we have? Because, <laughs> you know, there's quite a few stories. I'll, I'll try to consolidate one story. I, I've done a YouTube video about it as well. But basically, it was, I when we were like early days with SFA, we were only registered in Hong Kong, but we had Chinese, mainland Chinese employees as well. And that's sort of a, a gray area in terms of employment. And so what happened was one of the employees that I'd hired, I noticed the first three months, she was fantastic. And then after three months, she started to kind of drop off with her work. And I started getting complaints from suppliers and, and customers and things like that. And the, the contract that we had with her didn't specify the criteria in terms of if she got fired, you know, why she would get fired and the process of that. So when I did fire her eventually, like, I, again, I'm like skipping a lot of details here, but when I did fire her, she threatened to sue me and threatened to sue the company. And we were in a weird situation that time period because we were in the process of registering our mainland license. So if she did sue me, I, I didn't know if that was going to compromise the license registration of the company in mainland China. So anyways, we ended up settling on, I think I paid her like, I think initially she asked for like six months payment, Ouch. which I was like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and I was like, you've been working for us for like eight months. You're friends with the other staff. So I'm like, you really want to have the other employees in the company as, as well, because that's what you're doing right now. And then we ended up settling on about, I think it was four months and I paid it monthly for four months. So that's probably the biggest mistake I made was just not fully understanding the labor laws in, in mainland China and, you know, just, yeah, yeah that's pretty much it. I think that's getting, the getting, mistake. getting sued by a Chinese person in China, man, like yep. you're not winning that no, one. Not a, not a good I mean, one. there, I got stories like that. I mean, I don't, I don't know about. They, the labor department supports the locals. I think in most yeah. markets, you know, because as a Western foreign, not Western West, as a non-local, like a foreigner in a country, as a as a business owner, the government's usually sides with the local versus the international person. Whether that's, mm -hmm. I think even in the U.S. probably, but you know, everywhere, I think it's, uh, it's, especially it's changing a bit in China on a on a higher level, like as in Nike have won a case recently in New Balance and. At a very, very high level, it's changing a tiny bit, but yeah, I'm sure it's at our level, it's not really. Yeah, and, and for me, I just kind of looked at it like, look, like we're going to lose this X amount of money by paying her four months. The The norm is two months in China. So she, she got double what she was supposed to get. But, you know, I was just like, look, like at the end of the day, the business itself is going to be bigger in the future we're going to make way more money than this so it's not, like i might as well settle and just deal with this and, and and move on so long term yeah we made significantly more money than what i paid her and everybody else in the in the company the uh, other employees stayed so you know and they were also disappointed i had like a meeting with my staff and we we had a conversation about it and you know everybody else was disappointed in her in terms of how she behaved so you know it is what it is. But now my, my contracts are iron tight. <laughs> I'm super happy to hear. Then of course, I really understand this is where we really learn from what is happening in our business all through this years. And I want to hear it from Alan. You're not going anywhere. Alan. <laughs> yeah, man. 
Uh, yeah, well, I suppose I kind of touched on it at the start with the apparel brand launched a month, yeah, a month before COVID had to, had to smuggle all my black clothing in, into Hong Kong because all black clothing was banned in Hong mm. Kong during the protests here. It had stored it in Rico's apartment and uh, yeah. everyone's every, every stuff in Rico's apartment. Yeah, every, everybody's Rico's storing apartment. stuff in my apartments. Rico's apartment <laughs> is a great warehouse. If anybody <laughs> here needs a warehouse, <laughs> inventory, clothes, <laughs> abandoned goods. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start like uh, Airbnb equivalent of storage. <laughs> I should. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like we, we, I suppose it's not, it's, you know what, it's not necessarily one mistake. There was loads, there was loads of mistakes made. There was loads of good stuff done with the brand, but one of the, one of the biggest issues was around team and, and my partners, like two, two great guys, two brothers here in Hong Kong, but they were too focused on their gym and their training and not focused enough on the brand where I was putting everything into it. And at the start, that was fine. And, and I kind of fell into the trap of doing everything anyway. So then it became the norm. And when one person is doing everything, you get a bit resentful to the other partners. And then also, I, I like, I'm good at some stuff, but I'm bad at, bad at a lot of stuff. So I shouldn't be doing everything within the business. So that was, that was a big mistake for sure. And then I think like a lot of it was bad timing and kind of going into the brand a bit short-sighted in terms of the research research I should have done going in. The gym apparel industry is a, a very tough market to break into. Uh, nice and glamorous, but very, very tough to break into. Didn't go into it with enough money was another one of the mistakes, but learned a huge amount from it. And as I've said to loads of people recently, it's 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 one of the best things that's ever happened to me in business. I didn't feel like it at the time, but Taking a step back and and seeing it for what what it is and the learnings I took from it, yeah, for sure, for sure is 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 going to be one of the best things that's ever happened. But lots of mistakes around uh, along the way, and I, I think the biggest one being the team, and that's something that myself and Rico have been working together for four or five years now. But the last year, a lot closer, and that actually gives me a lot more fulfillment and joy which is super important as well with work, right? You, know, you, you need to be happy with what you're doing or if you are happy with what you're doing, you're, you're, you're blessed. I, I have a question for you, actually, going off of what you just said. What is the difference, obviously without you know disparaging previous business partners, but what is the difference that you feel in terms of fulfillment? Like why do you feel fulfillment, more fulfillment working with me more closely? Because I know you're working towards the same thing and you're putting in... 110 percent effort in in on the other side whereas I, I we would have gone to a lot of meetings with with the urn stuff and we sit down and we have conversations and then it's like me going off and doing everything <clears throat> mm -hmm. and you don't feel part of a team and with all the sfa stuff where we're building towards something bigger right we're always talking about ideas and we've we've over the last kind of i'd say two or three months we were really trying to develop something bigger and uh, scalable as a brand and something mm -hmm. a bit different in the sourcing and manufacturing agency area as well and that's exciting that's like it's those like i'm like genuinely so excited for our call at 7 30 because i know the project we're working on and <laughs> like i nice. love that right like i'm like yeah. one you have one phone call and that makes your day good mm -hmm. and that makes you happy and i think that's that's an, that's an, that's something that's really just really important. Girlfriends are gonna get jealous, man. So you're getting the girlfriend's oh, my girlfriend's jealous. already jealous. What? She said my girl, my girlfriend's already jealous. She's like, "Oh, you talking to Alan again?" So oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm super happy to hear. Oh, that honestly, I agree to the two of you. It's all about putting effort in what we do. And from that, that's where we do everything more, better we grow, or we develop and many, many more. And of course we have Mike here also has been taking care of a lot of businesses, being a great, um, I, mean, oh, I mean, I want to hear from you two as well. I like Rico. I mean, it was a whole show of failures. I was even, there was even a podcast was invited about your, your worst investment podcast or something. <laughs> the guy I was on and, but I, before I even say, I mean, like, like Alice says, that's how we learn the best. You know, I think to be an entrepreneur, to be a business owner, by definition means you're putting yourself out there on the block, you know, to, to, to test your ideas. So I've had 
so many failures and mistakes and problems. And, but I mean, I think that's how we, how we grow. I think maybe a recent one last couple of years. Hmm. Hmm. You know, the mask stuff. I don't know how I feel about that. If I call that a failure or not, but the mask stuff, we've done even dedicated shows about that. I know Rico, we've talked about that, but you know, I think, I don't know if I still kind of. Yeah, somewhat... we still have masks sitting in oh, our warehouse. Oh, you still have masks? In, yeah, uh, in the warehouse wanna, in the States. Do you want to buy any? Do you want to buy any masks? <laughs> Anybody oh, want to hit us up and uh, buy some masks in the States? That whole mask thing, like a lot of people, you know, myself included, everybody jumped into that. I remember the conversations. I think it was more relevant for you, your business, but I wasn't really in sourcing. I'm not really in sourcing. And, but, you know, the whole world was like falling apart and it looked like, you know, Amazon warehouse froze. Even all their Amazon seller friends were just jumping and selling masks. Like we were joking, like people were sitting in their basements in their underwear with their mom's basement trading, saying they had like $5 million worth of masks they wanted to buy for the, the city of Pittsburgh or some shit. You know, I was like, everybody's like selling masks, you know, like, yeah. but I, I, I mean, for me, I would, we, you know, I hope to bring it back. I've talked to great to faith about it. You know, load pipe, we were trying to make like a group buying platform. I still see potential in that people still even sign up for the beta. It's still online, but uh, you know, that didn't work out. We thought we tried to start with the, the masks to, to get the mask, you know, critical mass and then move to other industries. But then, you know, we started emailing the list of load pipe. People signed up. Do you want to buy a camera holder, a smart AI controlled and then somebody replied like, Mike, you should just go back to your, go back to your other stuff, like selling online. Like, don't, don't pitch me a different product to group by every, every week. You know, I don't want to be on some list to group by random stuff every, every week. So kind of put that one back on the shelf, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess that would be one recent business mistake, but you know, again, like what's that word? Like hindsight is twenty twenty or. You know, like, obviously if we know what the future is, but you know, like all these different stories, the, the person that we, you know, hired to work with us could have been like, the, maybe the, could have been that one that like is our best now. Right. I mean, we didn't know this person wouldn't work out or, or the apparel wouldn't have been a hit or, or the load pipe or the mask wouldn't have, you know, we don't know when we're doing it. Right. Like that's why, you know, my favorite poem is the uh, man I'm blinking? It's the Dwight D. Eisenhower, the man in the arena. Yeah, I don't know if you know that that poem. I even have a blog on my personal blog about it. But it's like it's a, it's like a few paragraphs. But it basically says the the gladiator or the person the the doer that does is the person that we should celebrate, not the critic on the audience at the at the arena that's yeah. saying, "Oh, look, he's stumbling, he's falling, mm. or she's falling. He's not doing. If I did it." You know, or this, or they say like, you know, don't, there's some coach thing. Like, don't give me feedback on Monday morning or m Monday after the game on Sunday. Give me feedback of what play to play when I have 30 seconds between plays to make that decision. You know, you know like yeah. it's so easy yeah. to so look Monday back and say, back why did I do yeah. that? Right. But Ryan, Ho we, Ryan we Holiday talks about that poem. Oh, really? Yeah. It's yeah, a nice yeah. one, man. Yeah. I, it's really a nice one. So, I mean, we all are putting ourselves out there and taking action and, and uh, you know, that's how we get stronger. You know, like I tell my kids, like your muscle gets bigger because you, you push until it gets hurt. You know, it's almost like damaged and then it comes back stronger, you know? I mean, like I saw something recently, it was Apple. Apple is the biggest brand in the world and they've had hundreds of more failures than they've had successes. Now their successes have been huge, but they've, they've released way more products that haven't worked than they have products that have worked so i mean even the top yeah. companies are doing it there's a good there's another good clip i saw on a youtube video a long time ago but the success magazine person one of the previous ceos he says you can't control the pendulum to success but you can control the pendulum to failure so you push yourself so hard and be potentially of course you don't purposely fail but you put yourself out there in a position where you can fail yeah. enough that you hit it big like apple right and it swings mm. to success yeah. uh well, there's a, there's a, yeah all right go, go ahead, ahead sir no that's it that's it, that's it. yeah I was, I was gonna say there's that quote that successful people are comfortable being uncomfortable so mm. there's that aspect mm. of like you know you 
in order to succeed, you have to put yourself in an uncomfortable pos pos position, right? So yeah, you have to be comfortable in the uncomfortability. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I love that. Also, of course, my, my take on that, of course, is our failures would be our building blocks, like our baby steps to reach yep. success, honestly. Mm. I, I love all of the stories. I believe all of our listeners and all of our viewers super excited to learn more about you, more, more about Alan, more about Raquel. Well, of course, if you are interested, everyone, to work with this wonderful and amazing people, well, please do promote your socials your company let's start with Rico with us like what we have a we have a discord right now so if you go to sourcefinasia.com slash sfa dash discord or you can just go to the main website and look at the navigation for discord discord is is really important for us right now because we are sort of in a transitional period where we're working with larger companies, but we still want to work with small to medium-sized businesses and startups, people that are doing crowdfunding campaigns, things like that. So for the, the, the way we see it is like, I'm on Discord, I'm communicating with these companies, these people on Discord. We have two AMAs every week. One is called Ask Batman Anything. Another one is Ask Mike Anything. We also have exclusive like case studies and podcasts. We have a separate podcast for the Discord called New World New World Orders. So a little bit of a conspiracy vibe to it. And uh, yeah, besides that, the sourcemanager.com, just general slash contact us. And my email, Rico at sourcemanager.com. We have the Made in China podcast as well, if you want to check it out. And the YouTube Source by Asia as well. Got it. And we have for Alan as well. Uh, yeah. I mean, email Alan at sourcefindasia.com or my LinkedIn would be, would be the next best place to get me. I'm pretty active, active on the LinkedIn. And I'm doing a special guest on the, on the discord this tomorrow. So the ask, ask Batman anything. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be ask, it's going to be ask Alan anything. Yeah. Triple A. Triple A. Yeah. Because hey, hey, hey. I'm because I'm chilling, I'm on vacation and stuff. So like uh, Alan's guest hosting that. So nice. Okay. Really cool. All right. That sounds super exciting. Well, I hope our listeners and our viewers learned a lot from this wonderful people. And of course, hoping to get a lot more success for you, everyone, about a few. And we only hope the best ventures, business ventures for the both of you. Well, thank you so much. And we, we are super happy to have you in our show. And we look forward to having you again here in our show in the future. Well, Mike, do you have any more, anything you want to say before we let them go? We're all good. We're all good. This was a fun one. Even on the holiday, thanks for taking time on the holiday week, <laughs> golden week to make this happen. And yeah, I think we'll, well, we, we, we do a lot of exchanges on each other's shows. So I'll probably, probably have a round table on the Made China podcast soon. And maybe we, yeah, we'll do more as always in the future together. Thanks. Thanks Rico and Alan. Yeah, no, but I no, I mean, for me, I find it like, okay, so obviously we've been doing podcasts for a while. You know, you have to kind of change the format a little bit. And I, I just think that like, it's more interesting when you're talking to multiple people in the same space as you, rather than just doing the one-on-one -on -one interviews. The one-on-one -on -one interviews are fun as well, but like even that I've started to be more picky with my guests. But yeah, this is this is cool. I, I love this kind of dynamic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun. We, we, we agree. Awesome. Well, everyone, again, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Goodbye, everyone, and have a great day. Bye -bye. Thanks, guys. Cheers. All right, thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Okay. And thank you to our sponsor, our returning sponsor, Mercury.com, online bank. Well, it's a real bank, but you can do it totally online for U.S., our Blimp program participants are going through this as well. Thank you, Mercury. Travis is great there. He's been on our show. He's been in our events. We're going to have another event where we will have them attending as well. And if you want to get a little bonus for you and us, if you sign up and do some special circumstances, you can go to globalformation.com slash Mercury. I also have a video tutorial that we use even for the Blimp people. I use the same exact video to learn how to use it. I hope you can check it out totally free why not see you there all right so that was the show faith i, I think you're having fun on these right there's so much to learn and these crazy <laughs> stories that these guests and 
people share with us? Honestly, honestly, if I'm going to tell you up front, we've been learning a lot and I have been learning a lot as well. And I think our listeners and viewers, what do you think about this episode? I believe that you've been learning a lot as well in your homes, in your phones. And I think this is a special episode in my opinion. Why? Because it's some type of a roundtable discussion, just putting your insights and inputs. And there's, I mean, in one topic, there's a lot coming in. And I think just Alan and Rico just putting their own thoughts, inputs, and experiences gave a lot of flavor for this episode. What do you yeah. think? Yeah. I mean, they also started, I, I don't remember exactly, you know, when, but they've been working together and friends for a while. And now they're working even closer together as partners, which is really, really exciting. And, you know, I, they've both been on the show in the past separately. And this is the first time they're both together in this show. Like we mentioned, we, we at uh, Alan joined, decided to join later after we were prepared. And it was really a, a pleasure. Also this, you know, my favorite stuff in all the podcasts, I think for the listeners is the failures, the problems, the mistakes, right? I think it's easy to talk about the, <laughs> the, the success, right? You know, mm -hmm. the, the overnight success that took 10 years or 20 years, you know, some, sometimes wow. people talk about. So, you know, Alan shared pretty openly about his, his kind of athletic wear brand in Hong Kong that didn't, didn't work out. I mean, of course, obviously it's pretty hard to sell clothing during COVID when there's lockdowns and even a protest because was happening. So, you know, I appreciate him being vulnerable for listeners to, to listen and learn from. And, you know, the mask nightmare. I mean, we were talking <laughs> about that a lot on this show in 2020. Yeah. So. I agree. Well, there's a lot, especially when, again, let's tap in with Alan. His experiences really just gave him more courage, more determination just to move forward. I know it's COVID. It's really hard to just pursue business and all. It's really hard. Well, but again, he's still here. Yeah. Right. He's still pushing, moving forward, doing progress and development. And again, again, Alan, if you're watching us as well, we're super happy that you are here continuously working for it with your business. And we are so proud of you. Definitely. And there's a lot coming in, especially before in COVID. There's a lot of masks. We need here in the Philippines. I don't know if, if it, when it comes to the other countries, there's a lot of requirements. When, whenever we need to go out, we need to have this community pass. We need to have that idea, like, when, oh my God, it's super hard travel pass. Yeah. Like, it's your, it's not literally the rest, of course, we learned from it, but, you know, to, the, the COVID situation brought a lot of, well, we need to pivot a lot. That's yes. mainly it. What can you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I saw September 11th, 2001 with my own eyes. I saw that World Trade Center collapse from my window. And the world changed after September 11th. I and never went back to the way it was before. And I don't want to scare people, but COVID is even more serious of a world event. Of course, a th I think 3,000 people, Americans died in September 11th or so. That was horrible. I, I could smell the death for weeks. But I think COVID is maybe more serious of a global catastrophe that has caused the world and the cultures and policies and politicians and politics to change for the good. I'm not a fan of the way things are going because it's like a, I'm a, I'm like, I'm a, maybe a libertarian. I'm a, I believe in individual freedom, not, not group, mm -hmm. not groups like telling me what I can and cannot do. And I don't want to yeah. be like, I'm a crazy person that says no masks, but of course I understand the importance, but now there's going to be like vaccine passports and, and, and there's going to be like documents and checking and this and yeah. this and yeah. that to do anything. And it's kind of like those, those scary movies, those futuristic movies where you, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it feels uh, like we're living it. <laughs> it is so yeah. oh, i don't know it's 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 a pretty big one i think, think so for everyone that's yeah. listening as well well of course COVID isn't something that well in my in my case here in the philippines really 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 took it seriously 
it's too much. Many, again, there's a lot that we need to require here for travel paths. Even if we, ju we just want to walk out and but just buy some groceries, it's literally hard. You want to hoard stuff. And yeah. sometimes there's this, uh, it's in the news that back in the pandemic, there's the news that you don't, you don't, it's, it's not okay to hoard things because you want to give out some time for people to buy as well for the others but of course you want to think of yourself your family so yeah. you, you really don't know which path you want to take on that <laughs> i know i know oh brother right? there's there's a lot yeah. here but uh, but yeah i mean it was scary like i was in the philippines when the lockdown started in march 2020 and the shelves were getting emptied in the rest and you know lg on our team we had like a team call and she's like mike you can get off the phone go get canned food <laughs> yeah, yeah seriously okay. i went to wow. to like the market and it was like the shelves were like emptying you know it was really nuts <laughs> so yeah. it's again what a situation that we have i believe our listeners and uh, of course our viewers again it's not only philippines of, of where mike is where i am but it's all it's all over the world and i think having you listening and having you viewing this podcast we are now surviving it all yeah. throughout with progress and I'm very happy that everyone's just coming in doing moving forward doing what they need to do and it's 2023 it's just around the corner yeah. and we are happy that we are able to overcome the situation that we have for COVID I believe so yeah exactly exactly so exactly we're just working better online you know I mean we will well, I was working online before COVID, but, you know, I think we've gotten even better, you know, like faith, we're, you know, working together well, and it's a pleasure to have you in the show. And, and do you want to share some of, you know, a little teaser of what, what you're, of course. we're chatting about? <laughs> Yeah, again, everyone, of course, that you have been seeing me here doing a lot of coasting with Mike, and I've been really enjoying the time working with him. He knows that we've been doing a lot of videos already, video content, and you might want to just wait for our almost every single week. It's almost, almost a week now that we are doing a lot of episodes, and we just want you to wait for it every single episode we want we want to make sure that you'll be seeing a lot of contents not only podcasts we will be guesting a lot of people and it's 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 very happy working with mike absolutely and again i was able to give him a quick vision of i have having my outsourcing agency it's actually called leva and just mainly helping entrepreneurs, business owners, just free up their time. I, I think so. That's the yeah. best word because I know you have your li a lot of workloads. I believe so. Definitely. And um, I believe so. Yeah. A lot of our listeners here are entrepreneurs, business owners, or want to start up a business. Might be, might be. And that's why I think, of course, any business owner would love some assistance on that. Again. We want to take off that workload. That's mainly my vision on that. Yeah. It's, it's just a quick glimpse. Want to take off that workload. You want to make sure that, oh, I want to spend more time with my family. I want to spend some me time just going on vacation, but I cannot because I have, I, have, I have a lot of things to do. So that's mainly it. We want to offer you or just help you get your assistant. It might be a virtual assistant. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be working with you like on site in the office but of course you are working with you even virtually but still developing the business even online that's why we want to leverage on that right we want yeah. to leverage on that working online everything's digital starting the pandemic and up until now we are still getting that vibe working remotely and we want to help you on that as well what are your, what's your take on that i'm really excited i mean i think some people know we've done We've done some webinars and courses in the past and to, to really collaborate together with your, with your startup and, and build this out. I think we're going to do some more shows and content webinars and masterminds and, and weave this in too. So I'm really excited. Faith, it's, it's, it's awesome. For us, we were so excited to create more webinars on it and also podcasts potentially. And uh, again, we'll, we'll be having more guests talking more about business. It's always that just giving value to our listeners and viewers as well. But yeah, and of course, I want to honestly would like you to share more about our GFA VAP mastermind call next week it yeah. will be on october 19 8 p.m manila hk time on wednesday what's the plan on that 
Sure, sure. So it's it's actually missed a month or so, and we're getting things back on track. It's a monthly roundtable with some of our members. Also, a, our new sponsor, CrossBetter, will be joining some of their reps that you, you, you might have heard the ad in our, our show today, first time. Actually, it'll be the day after the show goes live. So this show goes on the 18th, this will go on the 19th. But if you're in a member, it's private membership. It's, you know, we've been getting new members joining and, and applying and paying, and we really appreciate their support. So this is a way to engage with our, our experts and our, our, our community. It's more of a, just a general roundtable session. And we do have other sessions in, that are more focused, but this one's really just to catch up to, I'm also going to share some strategies about our launches. Oh, we've also talked about this NYBS or New York Bar Store videos. You know, it's more behind the scenes, some private things that we don't share publicly uh, as always on our, our uh, masterminds. Yep. I agree. Uh, uh, well, uh, people would love to watch that, that as well. We do have a call next week for our mastermind and we'll surely wait on that. And of course we were able to kick off our launch, our first ever show again for NY BS. So what is yeah. your take on that? What are your thoughts? I know you're pretty happy about that. I was, yeah, it was. <laughs> I was a little bit, you know, when we do post-production for these, I'm a little bit more flexible, but I was a little bit more of a perfectionist, if you might've noticed in our, our work systems, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But I, yeah, I mean, we're bringing it back. This is the, the first business, first major business that, that we had here. And yeah, so you, you know, I shared a story, the, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, and you and I, we, it was great. You're an awesome host. And that's on newyorkbarstore.com slash show dash kickoff. If you want to watch that, I almost feel like we should put it in a global major show. <laughs> uh, it was like, almost like a global major interview in a way, but I think people are like, yeah, this kind in my of yeah, yeah, we but, can do that. We can do that. I agree. I agree. And I really enjoyed that kickoff episode. Again, it's it's our first time for that, for your for this major brand that you have before. And just bringing that in, it's like a major comeback. That's the word. Yeah. Major comeback. It, I mean, it. I was so happy about it. You were so happy about it. But of yeah. course, we want our listeners and viewers to be happy with us as well and celebrate our kickoff and comeback yeah. of the New York Bar Store. And well, again, just watch. We do have, we will send, we have the link here down below and we want you to watch it as well. Definitely. It was a fun episode with you. It was yeah. a fun episode I, with uh, you. I really enjoy it, Faith. And uh, all right. Well, I think we had a lot of fun in our outro and this is the... COVID, what is this, grind, globalformation.com slash COVID dash grind. If you want to check out all the show notes and links, maybe the Powerpuff Girls family photo will be on there. I don't know. Will it be? Yeah. Hopefully if I pull that up. All right. Fingers crossed. We'll put the Powerpuff Girls. Fingers uh, crossed. I want to see that. All right. Um, all right. We'll see you everyone. See you in the next show. Um, thank you so much, Mike. I'll Thanks. see you in the next show. Everyone, please do support our videos moving forward. And we are so excited for the coming videos. And please stay tuned, stay watching, and stay listening. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. To get more info about running an international business, please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com. That's www.globalfromasia.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Thanks for tuning in.